Being relatively new entries into the cycling world, bikepacking and gravel are areas ripe for hacks. Heck, they're both pretty much hacks themselves. In that spirit, today we're going to go over five amazing hacks that I use all the time on my rides. Let's kick this off with an easy one. If you're like me, you may rely on chamois cream for a little down there care while on long rides. But when riding for multiple days, a full-size tube can be too much. If you're using chamois butter, you can buy single-use packets, but those tend to be a bit pricey. If you use some other brand of chamois cream, you're likely stuck with a large container. So why not make your own single-serve chamois creams? For around $8, you can buy 600 small plastic bags from Amazon and then fill them with exactly the right amount for your needs. I like the 2x3 inch size for this. Prop open the bag and squirt in as much or as little as you want for a single use. Sometimes I need to shake it a bit to get it all to drop down into the bag completely. Squeezing the chamois cream out of the bag to apply is effortless and the trash is super small and easy to carry out. I generally carry one for each day I expect to be riding and then throw in a few extra just in case. I also like to keep one of these in my top tube bag on my gravel bike so I have it when the day ride goes longer than expected or for those times when I forget to lube up before the ride. While that hack was pretty easy, this one is the most complex on the list. It requires tools and a little effort, but the results make it worthwhile. For this hack, we're going to use an old broken carbon mountain bike handlebar to make an aerobar bridge. A bridge is simply a perpendicular bar that connects between your aerobar arms. This is handy for gaining a bit more real estate to mount things like a GPS, a light, or anything else you may want. Clearly I've done this hack a few times with this old bar, now there's quite a bit of it missing. If you don't have a broken carbon bar laying around, you can hit up your friends. Still no luck? You can buy a cheap bar on AliExpress or eBay. I wouldn't trust these for actual riding, but for this hack they'll work great. Another option that's pretty cheap is to buy a carbon accessory bar. Lastly, you could use a piece of PVC pipe for this, but PVC is a bit heavier and the diameter isn't quite right. And let's face it, carbon is sexy AF. If not done already, you'll want to mount your arrow bars exactly where you want them. First, we want to measure the distance between the center of each of the arrow bar arms. I'm using calipers here, but this isn't exactly rocket surgery. You can really eyeball this and still come out with a quality result. Next, mark the measurement on your carbon bar. It's easiest to use a piece of tape to mark it. Again, we're not talking nanometer precision here. Now it's time to cut the bar. If you have a tool made for cutting bars, great, use it. But if not, I find using a cheap miter box works well. You could also freehand it. Did I mention precision isn't necessary? Carbon dust can be pretty nasty, so wear a mask. Fortunately, COVID has left me with a case of N95 masks perfect for the task. Carbon dust can also short out electronics, so I should probably keep my camera away, huh? I did a quick eyeball test to make sure the newly cut tube looks roughly the right size. Seems good to me. Now this is where the carbon dust gets next level. Using the rotary tool, grind out a concave portion in each end so the tube can butt up nicely with your round arrow bar arms. This step is 100% freehand and is more art than science. I'm sure the engineers out there could make this more precise, but it's just not needed. Doing this second bit is tricky, as you will want to make sure the concave bits line up. So I check my progress regularly and make corrections as I go. Now I try a dry fit to make sure it fits well. This is the first time it's ever worked without any adjustments. I'm pretty happy. Next, we need to cut slits in both sides on each end. This is just big enough to feed a zip tie through. I prefer using small zip ties which require a smaller slit and generally produce a cleaner look. Now, the final step is to use the zip ties to secure your new bridge to your arrow bars. Crank the zip ties down good and tight and leave the clasp on the underside out of view. With it installed, you can now add a light and enjoy the benefits of your light being out above and in front of your handlebar bag. With the previous hack, one option was to repurpose an accessory bar. But for this hack, we actually want an accessory bar. Over the years, I've built quite a collection of accessory bars, but recently found what may be the ultimate accessory bar for long rides. This accessory bar is also a cache battery. This means I can run a stupid short USB cable to my GPS and easily keep it powered up, and I'm not using any precious bag space for the battery. 
The accessory bar uses two rechargeable 18650 batteries. And my favorite helmet light, the Phoenix LD30R, uses the same batteries, so I have a backup if needed. As a bonus, the power bank works just fine with one battery. Now I'll warn you that this is a cheap, no-name product from China, but the electronics to make it work are really quite simple and I've had zero issues with it. So check out the USB rechargeable handlebar extender, 7.inch handlebar extension, and a build-in 4000 milliamp hour bike phone charger for holding bicycle speedometer, GPS, phone mount holder, and bike light on Amazon. I was super disappointed when I discovered bolt-on top tube bags still needed that obnoxious strap around the steerer tube. I naively expected bolt-on bags to eliminate the need for any additional straps. But while some people have made widgets to make this a bit better, I wanted to eliminate the strap entirely. It took me a few prototypes to discover such a simple solution. First, I designed and 3D printed a piece to fit inside the bag and add structure. I then bolted this piece to the bike inside the bag. It provided excellent rigidity across the bottom as well as the sides of the bag. This internal frame worked great, and as you can see, the bag doesn't move at all. But what if you don't have a 3D printer? It turns out, any flat, stiff piece of plastic will work just as well. In the spirit of reuse, I made a plate out of a backer board from a Lazain tool. I had already done the measurements, so I was able to just trace my 3D printed solution to save some time. Once I cut it out, it was the same process as before, just bolted on as usual. Be sure to use either M5 bolts with flanges or some washers to provide some extra structure. And now I have a stable top tube bag without any strap around my headset. Here's a quick bonus hack for you. If you like bike hacks, then be sure to click like and subscribe below. This really does help out the channel and let me know what content you appreciate and want to see more of. The last one on this list is a quick and easy hack for anyone who keeps a hydration bladder in their frame bag. Dealing with an unwieldy hydration hose that just won't stay in place can be annoying or even dangerous. I'd always try to tie some kind of loose knot to keep it in place, but there's a better way. If you spent any time in the corporate world, you may already have experience with the solution. I'm talking about a retractable badge holder. It has a clip on the end of a retractable string. You can easily wrap this around a hydration hose and then clip the other end to the cable housing on the front of your bike. Yet another reason not to go fully internal cable routing. Now your hose always snaps back to the same place. You can now take a sip and simply let go of the hose confidently knowing it will be held securely in place. So that's it. Five hacks for bike packing and gravel. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends. And if not, hit the like button anyway. If you want to see more hacks, let me know in the comments below.